Hello, welcome to another Tunnelist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called West Coast Beach. Um, it's a 12 by 24, and I painted this last week, finished it off yesterday. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty big for me. Uh, kind of uh, trying to scale up. And scaling up for me is always a little, uh, maybe it is for everyone, it's always more of a challenge. Although, I remember back when I first started painting, I can't remember the guy's name, but I was following his blog. And uh, he was doing like 8 by 10s and then he was doing a 30 by 40 inch version of the same thing. And then uh, the 8 by 10s, you know, what's great about that smaller size, the flick of the wrist, you've got a lot of um, ability to get distance on things. Uh, it just occurs to me as I'm talking to you, I may try and set up a way, and my, it's hard in my studio, and it's very small. So, it's, so my technique for getting distance on the bigger pieces is to uh, look in the video camera, um, and that does show me the the painting smaller. That's probably about the same. Uh, we all got to work with what we got. Um, uh, the, the tendency, of course, is the larger you work, the uh, so let's say you had um, a bough of uh, of a tree with leaves on it, you know, in a smaller painting you could just dash something off, dash, 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 and it looks great, and then you move on. Um, that's harder to do at the larger size. You're going to sit there and work it out a bit more, um, and but of course the only way to solve this problem is the the same way that you can solve most painting problems and that's by um, failing and then um, uh, failing some more <laughs> until eventually you say oh that, that that doesn't work this doesn't work the other thing doesn't work and you come up with an approach that does work yeah uh, what was I listening to a video this week that was talking about ah, the guy was talking about writing a hit song it wouldn't be much different um, with a hit painting okay with a successful painting and um, I sold one of my really good recent ones uh, yesterday um, and I knew it was super strong and now it's gone you know but um, uh, the guy in the video um, was uh, you know he, he had some friends of his that were actually musicians that had had um, number one record and uh, he was a musician. He was trying to. He was in a band with them, a new, a new band, not their band, existing band, trying to come up with stuff. And it took him a while to realize where he'd been going wrong, and that was that he was not uh, comfortable enough or conversant enough with just doing whatever and failing at it. And this is the thing. You've got to. Um, you got. To, it's a funny thing too, boy, isn't it? You know. You, it's not like you can go into creating a work of art or music or, or anything like that without caring about it being good. Of course you care about being good, but you have to wear it very lightly, very loosely, because, um, first of all, with painting, uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about music. It's not a music channel. We're talking about painting here. Um, so I do do music well as well though you can check out the links below the video yeah uh, but um, so many ways to fail like a number the, the, the big big ways and little ways and if you're only failing a little bit in some little ways that you, you're probably going to be all right um, the, the number one way I see most uh, painters fail um, is with uh, poor composition um, they're not leading the eye through the scene um, or they're not aware of, uh, you know, they're working off a of photo reference and they're not aware of that. They need to eliminate things and move things around, etc., so on and so forth. And this painting I had, um, it was a lot more of the ocean and beach than we're seeing here. And it already looks like quite a lot to me. Also, it was way more of the beach, uh, which, by the way, you can see that reference image and the real-time version of this uh, painting session or sessions I should say since it was over three days uh, three different painting sessions um, in the members area that's six bucks a month you can tip in you can tip out um, this is a six hour video 
video there. Um, and a lot of people say, well, I can't just sit around for six hours. Well, what a lot of people do is they just have um, me kind of painting in the background as they're painting. Um, and they'll hear me um, talk a bit and watch my my progress a bit as they're working on um, what they're working on. And that seems to be a great strategy. That's what I would do. Um, but I, I had a comment on the channel. Maybe I mentioned this in my last video. Sorry if I did. Um, this person was saying that they thought the real-time painting was was more valuable and I really agree that's why one of the reasons I set up the members area and there was a time on this channel where I switched from the 15 minute mode which we are in now to live mode and initially that did very well but um, and I don't look at my stats a lot I'm not that kind of youtuber um, I'm a painter who shares what he does you know and tries to pass on some insights and information um, but, you know, obviously there's going to be a huge drop-off on uh, any video. Even even 15-minute videos are too long, especially um, for some of the younger folks out there, you know. So, um, after a while, I could see that was kind of... Uh, there was a lot of people that loved it and were into it, but a lot of other people w weren't really ready to make a commitment. That's why I come up with what we do now, which is uh, we do these 15-minute versions, and then we have in the members area the full live session. Hey, it looks like we've got an ad for my book coming up. I am. Uh, we were sold out for a little bit um, on the site, um, but I am uh, actually had a few more. But um, my inventory said sold out, and um, but I'm awaiting a new shipment this week, so it'll be our third printing. And uh, when I do the printings, it's like. 50 uh, at a time because that's uh, it's very expensive to do this uh, short run printing but I have to tell you I'm so impressed with the quality and uh, really gratified by the the feedback it's $60 and a good good $60 US a good chunk of that more than it costs to print it goes for the international shipping but I don't want that to be a factor that impedes people's decisions so I just include it and basically make not very much, but I'm so gratified and happy um, that my work is uh, getting out there and helping people. And books are a great resource because you can keep going back to them. You know, unlike videos, it's hard to find that little nugget that you heard here or there. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this painting. I was real happy. I'm looking at this right now. I'm super happy with the way the sky turned out. Um, and I've mentioned this on the channel before. Um, you know, there are lots of times I'm painting and I consider myself to have um, a, a definitely a degree of mastery when it comes to landscape painting. Um, I'm still wrangling with some of this seascape stuff, but when it comes to skies, trees, landforms and whatnot, I, I, I've been doing it a long time. But there is, in my mind, a lot of times as I'm working, is just this idea is like, well, I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> But I just keep going. I have some ideas, and that's the thing. I have some ideas, um, things that support me in, in my process, and that's, that's what carries me through. And ultimately, um, you're going to just keep going. Um, so talking about the landform that I'm working on now, it, it, was, it looks like it's detailed here. But let me tell you, there was so much detail in the reference that I had to leave out. And every little nook and cranny, it looks like I've worked... I have worked it out well here, but um, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near as pedantic as I could have been, you know, um, by following every... In fact, it reminds me, doing this sort of thing reminds me of drawing folds. I don't know if you've ever done um, figure drawing or fold drawing, you know, but I, had, I, I avoided it for years, but I finally would eventually hunker down and got to figure out how folds work and, and applied myself to getting accurate and faithful renditions of folds and clothing. Um, and these sorts of landforms are like that too. I will say like one of the things you really got to watch out for is areas like uh, more intense contrast and the um, like a real harsh transition between a high con uh, a very dark area and a lighter highlight that's running alongside of it. That can be a real problem um, with this sort of uh, um, hills uh, or, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's a um, peninsula popping into the ocean. And um, 
definitely the kind of thing I really like to paint. I'm, I'm, I'm really learning more and more what, what type of seascapes I like to do. And it's got some interesting features in the peninsula shape. The thing is, like, so many of your compositional problems are set um, with this kind of painting because um, you've got these big triangles you're dealing with, which is the big, the big triangle wedge of the ocean coming into the land. It's almost always going to be like that. Um, you can soften it or change it. Um, and I'm still working out different approaches there. Uh, I did do, um, you know, my favorite little thing here where I bring in the greens and stuff into the water. Also little bits of green. Now, uh, what you're seeing here, as you can see, the light looks a little different as it's hitting the painting. Well, I, you know, it took so long to paint those landforms that I wasn't able to get into the beach and the ocean. So what I did, and this is in the members area, I recorded the whole thing just for members. I oiled the painting out. And what I use is like a one inch uh, cheap uh, dollar store brush. It's a nylon brush, 100% nylon and cheap nylon too. Um, it's very soft though. And I can't risk using a rag because you have to be quite delicate. Otherwise you run the risk of uh, oil is still a bit of a solvent in its own right. Um, and that paint layer underneath is still just barely dry. It's dry to the touch, but you rub on it. You could rub down to the board with that oil and you'd be getting something off. You'd be washing stuff off. So you have to be very careful with the oiling out process. Um, and as I go, I might get into bigger and softer brushes there. Yeah, but that worked here. And the reason I did that was for you, dear uh, viewer. Um, otherwise, the the hill shapes the the next day when I came in the studio were all really dull and matte. And if there's a downside to oil painting, that would be it. Some colors, predominantly earth colors and black, uh, which the you know that whole mass of hills is painted with grays and earth colors. Um, they go very dull the next day, and that's not a problem you're going to run into with acrylics. Um, but the, the, you know the problem with acrylics is that they're made out of plastic and it's very hard to escape that plastic feel and quality yeah anyway working in the water now I made that uh, whole water bit uh, and as I said you can see the uh, reference in the members area I made the whole water area way more it was only a tiny fraction of that size and uh, looking at it now I felt like I could have gone even more with it but um, you know, we make these decisions and you got to follow through. Yeah, uh, and overall, I'm quite happy with the way the painting turned out, especially once I start getting the white into the waves and things. And um, this painting will be for sale in my store. Um, a good price, I, uh, I think, something like seven, uh, six or seven hundred US. Um, and I can't go much less because it's, it's big enough that shipping is going to be a thing. But I think it's beautiful, and um, I'm enjoying the larger sizes. The, uh, that said, I'm going to be going into the studio tomorrow, and I'm working on something a little smaller, you know, and uh, uh, maybe even some minis, you know. Why not? Everything, every size you paint has got its own challenges, and one of the things that uh, you guys don't catch here in the 15-minute um, area is the um, you know me deciding what brush I'm going to use you know but brushes will be sitting in the jar and speaking to me it's like no Mike it's my turn I can do the job for you and uh, lately I've really been favoring these uh, quite reasonable DOS brushes DAS they're blue out here they're only like 253 bucks um, but I like the loose quality of them for the skies and things and then for the um, I had uh, like the brush in my hand you can see in the video right there that's a Robert Simmons I did quite a lot of this with Robert Simmons um, the sand and the water um, both with a four and a two and I like Robert Simmons quite springy um, it has a much tighter um, feature in the shape of the brush than these looser DOS brushes um, which I like for skies and things like that um, so there's a little bit of information on brushes but and hopefully you got something out of that. I, I hope you get some inform information. And, and even, you know, don't get hung up on the uh, dialogue here because 90% of the reason I put these things up just for people to see a painting happen from plain board to finished painting. 
That's why I don't speed things up or mess around, get jiggy. Anyway, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.